This is Circuit Rhythm. It's the non-identical twin brother of Circuit Tracks from Novation, with new sampling and sample mangling features and real-time audio effects called grid effects, as opposed to Circuit Tracks with its two synth engines and a few other features. In this video, I'll take a look at the differences between the two in detail and then an in-depth look at what's new in Circuit Rhythm, then a look at similar features for those of you not familiar with Circuit Tracks, and finally pros and cons compared to alternative instruments. I'll also play all of Circuit Rhythm's preset patterns at the end of this video. Before I start, a quick disclosure, Novation sent these over for review, but as always, they have no say over the content of this video. This channel is funded by viewers who subscribe to my content and book updates on Patreon, YouTube Premium and ads, whether skipped or not, and store affiliate links in the description, which help the channel regardless of the product you choose to buy. Okay, let's get going. This video will have a few main parts. Like I mentioned, first a comparison to Circuit Tracks, then an in-depth look at the features in Circuit Rhythm that are new or very different from Circuit Tracks. Then a look at the features that are similar between the two, like sequencing or scenes. So if you're familiar with those on Circuit Tracks, you can skip right ahead and meet us at the pros and cons. And then finally, at the end, like I mentioned, I'll play you all the factory patterns so you can get a diverse idea of what this can do. Let's get going. The biggest difference between Circuit Rhythm and Circuit Tracks is that you can sample and slice samples directly through the audio inputs in the back of Rhythm on the device itself, which is a meaningful workflow improvement compared to Circuit Tracks, where you need to use a computer to transfer and manage samples using the Novation Components software on that computer. Once the samples are here, there's also relatively little you can do with them on the device itself. Circuit Rhythm can also play melodies with samples which Circuit Tracks can't, unless you use my template available on my Patreon, of course, but I'll admit that's a workaround as opposed to something that's built in properly, like on Rhythm. Circuit Rhythm also has eight sample tracks as opposed to just four sample tracks on Circuit Tracks and has quite a few sample playback modes, more on that later. However, Circuit Tracks is no slouch either. What you give up in exchange for giving up these four sample tracks are two synth tracks and two MIDI sequencing tracks. Each of the two synth tracks has a six voice polyphonic synth dedicated to it, and the two MIDI tracks can be used to sequence external polyphonic gear. Now, Circuit Rhythm can also sequence external gear over MIDI, but you need to use up one or more of the sampler tracks for that, and at least as of the current firmware, external sequencing isn't polyphonic, so one note per channel for each of the eight channels each channel broadcasts on a different MIDI channel that you can configure. In addition to the differences between the track types, there's one more major new bit of functionality in Circuit Rhythm, and that's the grid effects. Both circuits have reverbs and delays and a built-in master compressor. The grid effects are new and exclusive to Circuit Rhythm. They're audio effects that are applied to the entire signal chain. So for example, if I go into grid effects, effects like reverse, repeats, and others we'll talk about later, which by the way, you can use simultaneously. Again, more on this later. Another nice bit of functionality here is the drum pads view, which you can reach with either shift and sample record or double tap here. This lets you play the individual tracks through one accessible view. That exists for drum tracks here, but Circuit Rhythm has the additional functionality of note repeats using these pads. So for example, if I wanted to repeat this at different rates or triplet rates, I could do that. And if you want, you could also latch the note repeats. Aside from those, there are a few other differences, some major and some minor. Sample time on Circuit Rhythm is 220 seconds as opposed to around 190 seconds on Circuit Tracks, and you can split that sample memory to 128 samples on Circuit Rhythm as opposed to 64 samples on Circuit Tracks. Circuit Tracks has a few other things that Circuit Rhythm doesn't. It supports using scales. So on Circuit Rhythm, you can only play notes chromatically in note mode, which I might be better off using a melodic sample. Circuit Tracks, on the other hand, has 16 scale. It has a chromatic scale like this one, but also 
a bunch of other scales and it does mean that you can play two octaves on two rows or four octaves across four rows whereas the expand view on circuit rhythm gives you two octaves at a time at most of course you can page up and down through the octaves using these arrows just like you can here in terms of sequencing even though circuit rhythm sends out midi cc's when you change its macro parameters you can customize those midi cc's for the two MIDI sequencer tracks, something you can't do on circuit rhythm. So polyphonic sequencing here across two dedicated tracks and monophonic sequencing at the expense or in parallel to the sampler tracks here. And then finally, another important difference, while both can combine audio coming in from the two external inputs in the back into the mix with internal sounds, you can't apply the sidechain reverb or delay effects to external audio on circuit rhythm as opposed to circuit tracks. However, the grid effects are applied to external audio in circuit rhythm in addition to the internal audio. More details on grid effects, of course, in just a bit. So other than those differences, the two are very much alike. As a matter of fact, they're so similar physically that one might ask whether the firmware is interchangeable. So I did, and Novation said no, that there's a slight hardware difference between the two that doesn't allow it. Time will tell whether someone will find a workaround for that, which even if possible would likely void your warranty, so I wouldn't count on it. Both have the same exact physical inputs and outputs on the back, USB-C for power and MIDI, a micro SD card slot, card not included by the way, that can store up to 31 packs or machine states, full size MIDI in, out and through, analog sync, quarter inch audio outputs and a 3.5 millimeter headphone output and two quarter inch inputs. Like I mentioned, both have delay reverb and side chain effects with the exception that those can't be applied to external audio in circuit rhythm. Again, at least not currently. Both have the same essential sequencing workflow though without polyphonic sequencing on circuit rhythm. Aside from that, both support probabilities, micro timing, ratchets, variable pattern lengths, eight patterns per track, per project, 64 projects across two pages per pack, and scenes, which are sets of patterns that you can chain that lives below the mixer on both. Both also have a master filter knob, which goes from outside the club to phone speaker. Okay, so that's it for an overall broad view of the differences and similarities between the two. If you want an in-depth look at the synth engines on circuit tracks, check out my video. Let's start here with the biggest news, which is the ability to sample directly into circuit rhythm through the audio inputs in the back and even edit and delete samples on the device itself. The sampling workflow is pretty quick and easy. You press sample rec, sample record to record samples. And this gives you a view of all the samples in the current pack. The factory preset pack is pretty full. And what we're doing now is paging between eight pages of samples. You can see that as I page down, hopefully you see this on screen, this lights up. So the 128 samples are grouped into eight pages of 16 samples. Since I don't want to destroy this pack, I'll go ahead and start a new one, shift packs, pick an empty one, hit play. And I am now in an empty pack. If I go into sample rec, you can see all the slots are red, which means they're totally empty. Now I could just pick a sample slot, hit record and fire away, but there are a few settings that you can change before you start recording. Now these aren't labeled on the panel, unfortunately, but you see what they do if you press these buttons. So this starts recording only if audio is above a certain threshold. It's on if, uh, if this LED is on. This attenuates incoming audio, minus 12 dB or zero. This turns on and off resampling meaning resampling the internal audio. I don't want to resample right now, so we'll turn it off. And then this turns monitoring on or off. I'll want monitoring on, of course. Sampling YouTube or the radio is always fun. Luckily, I have the rights to my own videos, so let's maybe go to my old Circuit Hi. Tracks video. This is Circuit Tracks. And try In and sample video, that. I'll compare. I can turn threshold on, hit record, which arms it, then hit play and hope for the best. Hi. 
This is and circuit tracks. It's sampling in this now. Video, I'll compare it in depth to the now you can record samples that are up to 32 seconds long, and you can see this, um, this video, so add up here. Strong. Now at any point while recording, I can hit a new sample slot, and everything will be sampled into that slot from that point on. This creates entirely new samples in each slot, as opposed to the live slicing feature, which we'll talk about later, that slices up a single sample dynamically. Okay, let's stop that. So, now I've filled up these slots. Hi. Of what circuit? And finally, is and cons come. And yeah, if I didn't like any of them, I could clear them. Of course, I could have loaded up the factory pack or duplicated it, cleared up some of the samples, and then sample again into any slots that were empty. You can monitor input levels, by the way, through this, and this will also control the um, level of incoming audio if you just want audio coming in as you're playing other tracks. There's no control of audio levels for the incoming audio currently in the mixer. The mixer can only control each of the eight tracks. So if you want to control the level of incoming audio, you do that through here. Samples, by the way, are automatically normalized. So and cons come for example, some one of these high. may be potentially lower this is than others. Yeah, this is a good example Yo. because the samples were normalized. Now, while you're here, you can still edit and trim the samples. There are a few playback modes. One shot will just play Yo. the uh, sample start to finish. Hi. This one's clearly too this is long. Circuit tracks. I can move it into gated mode. That means the sample will only play hi while I press the button down. This lets me easily Hi. trim the Hi. sample, and you can see a preview of what I'm trimming here. By the way, shift and length or start will make gentle changes to the length or to the start point, but here we can safely, uh, oops, trim this. Hi, hi, hi. Now, an important distinction needs to be made. When you're on the sample record page, you're trimming the physical samples. You're not changing how they'll play hi. back. So hit save before you move on to another tracks. sample, otherwise video, your changes I'll will be gone and you'll need to redo Hi. them. When you exit sample rec, you can Hi. still trim the sample, but those changes won't be tracks. destructive. Hi. And by the way, reverse is useful for finding the end of the sample without listening to the whole sample. So if I wanted to just trim whatever I said here, yeah, and just end with the, uh, with the notes as opposed to me speaking. Right. Cool. So now... Hi. Hi. Good. We have just that. If I don't save this, the sample won't be trimmed, so I hit save. And now we've just trimmed that sample and freed up a lot of space. Now you can obviously also trim out the start of the sample. Now would I have preferred to have a screen here? For sure. You can fine tune the start point and end point like I mentioned with shift. Hopefully in the future they'll at least add a transient detection feature. Anyway, this is the sample. And once that's trimmed, we can immediately go into the sequencer or into note mode and play that sample and apply any of the sound design options you see here. So tune it an octave down or an octave up. And you can do that with semitones using shift and uh, say add distortion. Any changes outside the sample rec page are non-destructive whether it's the start length or high pass filter or low pass filter with resonance. Slope is an attack decay envelope that you can apply to a sample and it has two options based on whether you turn it counterclockwise from the middle position where this LED is sort of uh, as low as possible or clockwise. If you turn slope counterclockwise, attack is set to zero and you control decay and you'll see the LED get dimmer as decay increases. And if you turn it past zero, it'll turn into an attack decay envelope, which we can hear better if we choose the gated sample mode. So a slow attack decay if slope is all the way clockwise, and then increasingly shorter attack and decay times as I turn it counterclockwise. So to recap, we covered how to sample. Remember, you've got eight pages of 16 samples each for a total of 220 seconds of samples per pack, 31 packs on the SD card. You have recording settings and settings to help you trim the samples. Once you trim and save, you've got your pack all set up. And then you've got sound design options like I mentioned earlier. And you can play a sample up and down chromatically. However, aside from playing a sample up and down chromatically, there's a second sample playback mode, which we access in sample mode, and that is 
the slice option. So up until now we were playing in keyboard option and you can play one shot, get it, loop and reverse the sample. You can also set choke groups. The live slice option as opposed to chopping up a sample when you put it in the pack lets you slice up a long sample in real time and not as part of the sampling process. So you press the slice button to enter slice mode and then you've got either four slices, eight slices or 16 slices. That's the only thing that I think is a bit, a bit opaque here that you have to look up in the manual, but trust me on this, it's either four, eight or 16 slices. Let's go for four. Now, once you do that and go into note mode, you'll no longer be able to play the sample chromatically. Rather, you'll see the four eight or 16 slices here. In cons compared to other products, market, 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 other now by product, default, circuit market, will just chop up the sample arbitrarily, product. equally. You could edit each slice using the start and length parameters. Market, 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 Let's trim market, out the word market, market here. You could just do that. And that's good, that's that slice edited. That's okay. Other products, other product, other product. Presumably you'll sample something with lyrics more exciting than products and market. But the point is that you can trim the sample any way you want, including putting stuff that's later in the sample as a first slice, for example. Now I can tune these. But you'll notice they all tune market together. Other product. The advantage of this slice mode is if you don't want the samples to play together, right, because the, the samples in each track are monophonic, you could quickly say create choke groups like this or just create different samples you can play in alternate on a single track. Another nice option if you hit expand, which is the second option on the note menu, you can trigger the sample using any one of these and set the first slice point and then continue slicing by just picking other pads. So let's kick it off, say here. In cons compared to other so if you've got good market. timing, you could set slice points in real time and then you can always go ahead and market. edit them in later using the start and length knobs. Market. So that's more or less the workflow both for sampling and the different sample playback options. Let's go ahead and talk about grid effects. Grid effects are real-time master audio effects, meaning effects that are applied to the entire signal chain, all eight internal tracks and audio coming in through the external input at once. You access these as a secondary function of the mixer and they're color-coded based on the effect type and you just hit play and press the pad. You can press multiple pads at the same time, like I mentioned earlier. Now, dimly lit pads always hint at something. In this case, it's a latch option. So if I wanted to say, latch the vinyl effect or the phaser along with it, and uh, maybe add a beat repeat, so you can sort of perform with these. I think it would have been nice, by the way, if they added an attack and decay envelope for these effects so that they wouldn't cut out abruptly like you just heard. These 16 effects slots are global for all the projects in your pack and you can customize them per pack. So if you wanna use them, you sort of need to pick and choose things that are applicable to all of your different patterns and you can choose different effects for different packs. Now, currently you can't configure or customize them using the device itself. You'll need to use the components software for that. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So this is the component software where you can manage your projects, your samples, and your grid effects. You can see that there are at least currently seven global types of grid effects, and you can go ahead and uh, just drag and drop them onto anywhere you want. So if I wanted to replace, say, this vinyl with this effect I could. And then if I now hit send to circuit rhythm, send just the grid effects. And let's go into, I think I'm on this pack. Let's hit send. This should now be instead of vinyl, a beat repeat. Now, the nice thing is I don't have to press this to preview the effect. I just hit live preview when I want. In the case of the beat repeat, let's say turn it on. That's what an eighth beat repeat sounds like or fourth or 16th or 30, 32nd or triplets. And I could set also a wet dry option here, which is pretty cool. Let's turn this off. So let's just 
take a quick listen to these, turn live preview back on. So that's repeat, reverses, pretty obvious, gator, okay, different options here, auto filter, with an LFO, different LFO shapes, stuff, digitize. Phaser. And the vinyl effect. Crackle isn't that great, but uh, you can get a nice low fire or wobble effect. So, pretty cool stuff with grid effects through components. So that's pretty much it in terms of features that are new in Circuit Rhythm. If you want a detailed walkthrough of all the features that are unique to Circuit Tracks, check out my review video, I'll link to that below. From this point on in the video, I'll briefly cover sequencing, automation, patterns, scenes in the mixer, which are more or less identical for both. So if you're familiar with the workflow on Circuit Tracks, feel free to skip ahead to the pros and cons, but there are some differences, so I'll spend a little bit more time on what's different with Circuit Rhythm sequencing. So zooming from the out in, Packs, remember, are everything in the system, 220 seconds of samples, and within a pack, you also have 64 projects on two pages. These projects are full and you can change the color for each project. These projects are empty. Then within a project, each of the eight tracks has up to eight patterns. Like I mentioned earlier, a pattern can be anywhere between one to 32 steps. And then on a per track basis, you have eight patterns. The patterns live in these pads. When you're on the pattern page, you can scroll up and down a single page and view four patterns at a time. So let's start out with a new project within this pack that already has 128 samples built in. When you dive into the track level, you can pick a single sample that's the default sample for that track. So you can pretty easily sequence the first 16 steps in a pattern like that. You've got control both over tempo and swing. So that's pattern one. Now I've chosen the default sample for this pattern and I can change that with a quick tap but you can use more than one sample in a pattern. You can preview the samples with a long press. A short press will change the sample. So you gotta be careful not to do that. So let's say that I was happy with this kick, but I wanted to temporarily use this kick. A long press on it won't change the default sample for the pattern. Then I could say, add it here. And that's called sample flipping, and you can flip any of the samples on a per step basis. I mentioned this earlier, you've got 128 samples per pack. You can travel through the samples with the up and down arrows, and you can see which page of the eight pages you're on briefly as you page up and down. So I'm gonna mess up the default sample, but this is page one and page two, and three, and four. So I can change the default sample to any sample on these pages, which would play that. Let's go back up to page one, pick this again. Notice my sample flip still lives here. Now by default, the pattern has 16 steps. The pattern can go up to 32 steps. If I press this button, it automatically adds another 16 steps and pages between those two pages, page one and page two, steps one through 16 and 17 through 32. And if I didn't like that, I could just clear the second page. Then I can go ahead and choose a different track and choose a different sound for that. Just go with this, change the sound's character with the macros. Then of course I could sequence it like that. And we'll talk about making this more interesting with automation in a bit. I could always go into drum pad mode and listen to all the instruments for all the tracks. See the appropriate track number light up here. Now you can also play live into tracks just by hitting record. 
And if you were expecting something more interesting now, would be as good a time as any to say this is not a finger drumming channel. And by the way, note repeats work here as well. And they're velocity sensitive, so I could hit record, hit note repeat, and say record the class. Pretty simply as well. So that's basic sequencing for drum style sounds within circuit rhythm, but you can also sequence melodic type samples. So this sample is on track eight. Then if I head out to note view, I can play that chromatically. You can't play chords like I mentioned earlier. So if you do want to play harmonies with the circuit rhythm, you can, you just need to copy the same sound to multiple tracks and program every note in a chord separately in a separate track. Anyway, this, you know, you can step sequence just like that or uh, play live while recording as well, both quantized and unquantized. So if I hit shift and record quantizing, you turn off record quantization. And this is how you turn it back on. And let's head out to the mixer and mute the claps just for a bit. Back into note view, track eight. Let's go for this. Fairly straightforward and easy to sequence here as well. And then you can both add and edit various parameters using these buttons on the left. So for example, velocity on a per note basis or change the gate length. So let's say that I wanted this note to last longer. I would just do that. Then this second page here lets you set micro steps, six micro steps within a single step. So you can easily add ratchets that way. That was obviously a bit too much for that step. And you can see the ratchet situation on a per step basis. You can set the probability of a note happening. Double tap gets to the second function. So by default, the probability is 100%. This bar is full, but I can reduce it to a substantially lower probability of playing for this particular note and not the others. And occasionally this note won't play based on this probability. Another fun function, let's maybe uh, clear these guys and maybe sequence a simple pattern that plays a major scale up. Okay, cool. So mutate is a fun one. That's sort of like a destructive randomizer. So if I hit shift and mutate, maybe it's better to save this pattern before, shift and mutate, then the pattern will change randomly. I can do that again, and again, until hopefully at some point you get a melody that you like. So that's destructive, meaning the pattern changes and you can't get it back, unless of course you go back and reload this pattern. There's another way to make changes to patterns that is temporary. If we go ahead into pattern settings, you can see a few of those functions. You can change its rate to different rates in relation to other patterns. So if I go ahead and maybe bring back a few of my tracks, and then go back into pattern settings of pattern eight, I can slow it down while the drums are running at a, the same rate, the same original rate. Then a few other options are playback in reverse, and a ping pong option, and then a randomization option, which may sound nice or slower. What else? We can change the pattern end point. Make the pattern shorter, now it's on random. Let's have you go to playing forward. Have it play faster. So that's the last step. And with shift, you can change the first step. That's a nice way to create arpeggiated patterns or just as an improvisation tool. So that's more or less what you need to know about sequencing notes into circuit rhythm. Let's talk a little bit about automation. So we've got this pattern going on with the uh, kick and hi-hats. To make the hi-hats a little bit more interesting, we can automate a few of their parameters. It's always good to practice these before you record them. Let's say if I like this motion, just hit record, wiggle this knob, 
turns red to signify automation. And I need to make sure that I turn off recording before I stop turning the knob. Otherwise the position of the knob will overwrite whatever I recorded. Now, if you wanted to step sequence that automation as opposed to recording it, you could, as long as the sequence isn't playing back, you just hit record and then hold the step and you'll see the value change on a per step basis. And you can edit that value as well for any step. You can see that it's really bright here then not so bright here. If I go back here, it's bright again. And automation of course applies to any of the other parameters. Let's say the high pass filter or anything else. Let's maybe do one more tune maybe. Just remember to stop recording before you stop turning the knob. This is good a time as any to talk about the mixer. I've been muting and unmuting tracks here. You can also change levels in the mixer. And these are automatable as well. Not only that, page two of the mixer lets you pan the hi-hats in this case. And as you guessed, I could automate that as well. You can't, however, step sequence the automation in the mixer as opposed to step sequencing automation of the notes in the tracks themselves. Let's talk about effects. We already talked about the grid effects, so you won't repeat that. But aside from that, you have both a reverb and a delay. The delay has 16 presets, which you choose by tapping the top two rows and the reverb has eight presets from none to very long, basically. Delay times get longer as you move towards this pad and we won't hear neither the reverb or the delays unless we send one of the tracks, one of the eight tracks to them. So let's say that I pick the reverb, I would need to send the hi-hats to it. Same goes for delays. So zero send currently, if I could say pick this one listen to whether it sounds good and uh, pick the uh, delay you like. So those are the reverb delay sends and effects. Then the third effect type is sidechain, an effect which ducks one sound to make way for another. You choose the sidechain source track by pressing these pads. So my kicks are on pad number one or track number one, so I'll pick that. And then Let's sequence something, let's say in track seven. It's good enough, so I'll place that here and then choose an extra long, oops, extra long gate. So that's our base and we don't want them to clash. So I'll go into the side chain page and you can go up and down to look for the track you want to duck. In this case, it's track seven. You can also use the colors and gradually increase the side chain. And you can see the bass is being ducked. And you can obviously set this to taste based on the kick playing. So that's more or less sequencing a single pattern to start putting together a song or longer patterns. We go into the patterns view. You can see four patterns at a time for each track and you've got another page for a total of eight patterns per track. Right now, pattern one for my kick, hi-hat, and bass are these patterns, but say if I wanted to choose pattern two for the hi-hats, which is empty, they just go away. Same for the bass. You can duplicate patterns, and then go ahead, say into this one, and uh, edit the bass note just for the heck of it. So assign this to this. And now if I go back to patterns, got this playing here, this note playing here, and I could chain them. create this two bar pattern. Note that I could have also created a single two bar pattern using the one to 32 button over here. Anyway, pattern chains here can be up to eight patterns long. So you can chain from pattern one if you wanted all the way down to pattern eight on the second page. And this is all nice for repetitive style sequences. If you wanted to create an entire song where say one pattern launches and then two join in and so on, you use scenes for that. Scenes occupy these 16 pads in the bottom and they shouldn't be confused with 
the grid effects, which is sort of like the toggle for this view. Anyway, these are the scenes. Right now the scenes are empty. The way that you assign content into scenes is go into the patterns, then choose which patterns you want to play. So let's say I wanted scene one to just have the kick, which is okay because these are empty. So that's my choice for scene one. Then go back into the mixer, hit shift, and lock that in for scene one. Then for scene two, I wanted, say, the hi-hats to join in. So I activate that, then go back into the mixer, lock that in for scene two. I can now play these manually. Just swap scenes whenever I want. Or chain them like this, oops, like this. And that's how you basically create a song. Let's just make one more, go back into patterns, choose the hi-hat kick, and then these two, so that's this would be scene three, go back into the mixer, assign that to scene three, and create the whole chain, and it will move through the scenes, just like that. And once you reach the last scene, it'll loop back to the first. So those are more or less the highlights of sequencing with circuit rhythm. There are a few other features that I didn't cover. There's view lock, which lets you lock in specific patterns and edit them while other patterns are playing. You can also transpose entire patterns. Let's say we just stick to this one by holding shift and hitting octave up or down. And that's an important thing to note when you transpose samples up, they'll play for half the time. Just like when you transpose them down, they'll play for twice as long. Circuit rhythm doesn't support time stretching, at least not currently. Then there's a metronome called click here. And if you hit shift in setup, you can assign different MIDI channels for each of the eight tracks and control both the MIDI transmit and receive settings for notes, CCs, program change, and clock. Okay, let's take a look at the pros and cons of circuit rhythm. I'll start with the alternatives. When reviewing it, I was actually surprised, just like with circuit tracks, at the small number of drum machines and groove boxes that can sample on the instrument itself available at this price, meaning at around $400. I think the Electribe 2S is pretty much it. Please comment below if you're familiar with others. And I'm not talking about the pocket operator style sampling, but rather something that you can then take those samples and immediately work on them to create multi-track performances. If on-device sampling isn't important to you, that opens up the competition quite a bit with things like the Electron Model Samples, TR6S, other circuit options, and obviously at a higher price, there are additional options. For slightly more, the MC101 lets you sample over USB, which I agree isn't that great. And for an even higher price, the likes of Polyend Tracker, Electron Digitact, Blackbox, and the MPC1 are great alternatives, but for a higher cost, obviously. So circuit rhythm is a new entry into the sampler market as opposed to the sample player market with fewer features, but at a lower cost. Other cons that you should be aware of is that circuit rhythm doesn't have a time stretch, like I mentioned earlier, which would have been nice even as an offline process when you bring in loops and the fact that you can't create polyphonic sequences with samples. I mean, obviously you can use the same sample on multiple tracks to create chords that way, but it would have been nice if you could just you know, go into note mode, play a chord with a sound, and then assign that to a step, and then circuit rhythm would figure out the note stealing between tracks automatically. Same goes for sequencing external gear. It would be nice if you could enter a chord, assign that to a step, and have that go out to external gear, even if the internal track can't play that chord polyphonically. Regarding the lack of a screen, other than trimming samples, which as you can see, you can sort of get by with, I don't think it's an issue here, Everything is fairly accessible and it's nice to just be free of menus. Samples aren't in stereo. Everything is summed into mono when sampled. If that's something that's important to you though, you can potentially pan tracks separately and have stereo samples play like that way. In terms of sample time, 220 seconds per pack may not seem like a lot, but packs load up relatively quickly. So uh, let's say this, for example, is a full pack, the, the uh, factory preset pack. It loads up within a few seconds, as you can see. Let's give it a little bit more. If you're doing this on stage, you might want to have a joke or two ready on standby, but it's not unbearable and you get 31 of these packs with, like I mentioned, an optional SD card that you need to get. 
There's no built-in microphone, though I rarely find those useful. The inputs are only line in, and you can't apply the reverb and delay effects to external audio coming in through the inputs. I'm hopeful that's something they can add in the future. You can, however, like I mentioned earlier, apply the grid effects to incoming audio through the left and right inputs. Speaking of grid effects, they're a nice performance touch and are very easy to customize. I think that with proper mix and parameter controls set to taste, they can add a lot to a performance. It would be nice if you could edit grid effect parameters, say when you hold an effect, then you can use these knobs to change the different parameters that you can within the components software. Overall, the biggest pro for Circuit Rhythm, I think, is that for the cost that it's priced at, it delivers a really nice real-time sampling and sample chopping or slicing workflow, all that without a screen. I love the fact that there's a rechargeable battery here, and if your budget is around $400 and you're interested in sampling and then making music with those samples quickly and easily, on the go without a computer, Circuit Rhythm is well worth a look. Speaking of which, I've been told my ever-expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks is also worth a look. It's available to the good people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Don't forget to ring the YouTube bell if you don't want to miss the next one. Thanks for watching.